I just finished seeing patients in my obesity clinic and I noticed something I've seen over and over again. Many of my patients still believe that if they just eat less and move more, they'll lose weight. That's the advice they've been given, right? And yet it's not working. They tried it over and over again and the scale either doesn't move or worse, it creeps up. And I get it. If I were in their shoes, I'd be frustrated too. You're following the advice, you're doing the thing they told you to do, and it's not working. That's enough to make anybody feel defeated. And here's the kicker. It's not their fault. It's the advice that's broken. I've noticed that the problem isn't just the patients. It's the entire system. Most of the professionals they talk to haven't evolved their thinking. The nutritionist still says, watch your fat. The pharmacist may not ask a single question about food. And even my fellow doctors, many of them still focus on calorie counting like it's gospel. But let's just step back and think about that. If a strategy doesn't work and we keep doing it anyway, that should be a red flag. Obesity isn't a character flaw. It's a complex medical condition. And our understanding of it has to evolve. So today, Let's have an honest conversation. Is there one root cause of obesity? Probably not. We are complex human beings. We were uniquely created and we all have genetics, environments, life experiences, and exposures. What led to one person's weight gain might be completely different than what led to another's. And that's important because if the causes are different, the solutions have to be personalized too. Let me share a quick personal story. When I was preparing to start my family medicine residency, my wife and I bought a townhome in a western suburb of Chicago. It was brand new. We were newly married, full of excitement about the future. What we didn't think much about at the time were the power lines directly behind our unit. Now, I'm not saying those power lines caused harm, but I often wonder, did living that close to them have downstream effects I'll never be able to measure? Could that exposure have increased my risk for cancer? Did it play a role in how my metabolism works or my ability to maintain a healthy weight? I honestly don't know. And that's the thing. Some of the most important factors in our health aren't obvious. They're silent and they happen early, sometimes decades before the symptoms show up. That's why I love making these videos. Because even if you can't go back in time, we can start thinking differently. We can do better moving forward. Now, I can't move that townhouse away from the power lines. That ship has sailed. But what I can do is create a body that is more resilient, one that's metabolically healthy, one that burns fat, not sugar, one that doesn't depend on constant snacking just to function. So let's talk about what we can do. Let's look at some of the real causes of obesity and more importantly, what you can actually do about them. First up, hormone. If your hormones are out of whack, it doesn't matter how many calories you count. It doesn't matter how many calories you cut. The body is still going to fight weight loss. Insulin is the fat storing hormone. And if your insulin levels are high all the time, your body is locked into storage mode. That's insulin resistance. Add to that leptin resistance, where your brain can't even tell you're full. And now you're stuck in a cycle of hunger, cravings, and fat gain. And let's not forget cortisol. Chronic stress equals chronic fat storage, especially around your belly. So what can you do? You focus on lowering insulin. That means reducing sugar, starches, and ultra-processed foods. It means increasing your intake of healthy fat and proteins, which is exactly what happens when you adopt a low-carb, keto, or carnivore lifestyle. And consider trying intermittent fasting. Let your body take a break from constant digestion. You'd be amazed how powerful that simple change can be. Next, let's talk about processed food addiction. Food is no longer just food. It's entertainment, it's dopamine, and it's chemically engineered to make you overeat. These food hit your brain like a drug. They override your satiety signals and keep you coming back for more. And it's not your fault, it's by design. So what do you do? You remove the trigger foods. You detox your taste buds. You eat real whole foods foods that don't come with a barcode. Over time, your brain rewires, your cravings shrink, and food becomes nourishment again, not a battle. Then there's mitochondrial dysfunction. This one's less talked about, but it's huge. Mitochondria are your energy factories. When they're broken, your body doesn't burn fat efficiently. You feel tired, sluggish, 
and more likely to store calories as fat instead of using them as fuel. Want to fix that? Get better sleep. Move your body gently but consistently. Try cold exposure. Eat nutrient-dense foods, especially ones rich in B vitamins, carnitine, CoQ10, and healthy fats. Beef liver is one of the best mitochondrial supporting foods out there. That's why carnivore and keto diets can be so powerful. They support metabolic healing at the cellular level. And yes, let's revisit those environmental toxins. Rather it's power lines, plastics, pesticides, or seed oils, they're everywhere. They disrupt hormones, damage cells, and inflame the gut. While you can't live in a bubble, you can reduce your burden. Filter your water, use less plastic, avoid toxic body, and avoid anything that's toxic to your body. And above all, support your body's detox pathways. Getting enough sleep and sweating are great ways to do that. Now let's talk gut. When the gut is inflamed, the whole body is inflamed. You develop leaky gut. That leads to immune system activation, insulin resistance, and even mental health changes. It's all connected. And if you're constantly bloated, constipated, or foggy, your gut may be driving the weight gain. What helps? Some people do well with fermented foods. Others need a gut rest phase like carnivore to calm things down. Either way, removing gut irritants and letting your digestive system heal is one of the best things you can do. Now I could go on and on, but here's the truth. This is just the beginning. We're still learning about the real causes of obesity. Our knowledge is evolving. There are more causes we haven't even touched on in this video, and that's okay. This is about starting a conversation, so I want to hear from you. What do you think causes obesity that I didn't cover today? Drop it in the comments. Let's learn from each other. Your story might help someone else. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, just remember, you don't need to tackle everything at once. Start with one cause. Pick one thing to work on and let your body show you what's possible. And one more thing, none of this is medical advice. It's just food for thought from your favorite carnivore doc. And if this video helped you think differently, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who's been struggling and make sure to subscribe. I've got more videos coming that'll help you get back in the driver's seat of your health. Because obesity isn't a mystery, it's a puzzle. And the good news, you've already started solving it. I'll see you in the next video.